Welcome back to another video. Look at that, two videos in one month. That is as consistent as it's gonna get. I'm sorry, I know I should be better at this. I'm trying to do it at least once a week, but I just can't do it. So round of applause for at least getting two videos done this month. Um, I hope you guys enjoy them. But today we're gonna be talking about virtual assistants. They make your life a hundred times easier. If you wanna scale, that's the way to go. But here's the thing, virtual assistants only work as good as you do right? You have to train them. You have to teach them. And if you don't understand wholesaling, if you don't understand real estate, how are you going to be able to train someone else to do so, right? And I understand that no conversation with a homeowner is ever going to be the same. No two properties are always going to be alike. Um, but if you're able to train them to kind of understand certain cues and just the basics of information, then you're, you're already setting them up for success, right? They learn as they go. They also learn with experience. Um, and being able to consistently train them and consistently look back at what they're doing and be able to better them, that's how virtual assistants are able to get better and how your company becomes better. Um, in terms of finding virtual assistants, which is kind of like the biggest question, where do I find these people? How do I find reliable ones? Um, and there's a couple ways that you can do this, right? The first one is, and the one that I'm going to recommend is Upwork, right? I like Upwork, I like their system. I like having kind of a third party that tracks everything for us. Um, and the reason why is just in case that the virtual assistant isn't doing what they're doing, I can always appeal to Upwork and try to get a refund or whatever the case may be. Um, another way that I've seen is on Fiverr, which is kind of the same way. What I've noticed with Fiverr is kind of like short term work. Um, like if you need something done in a week or so, like a big project just completed, then you would go with Fiverr. Um, with Upwork, it seems to be a little bit more with longevity. Um, like if you need a contract for like three months, six months, a year, um, that's what, what I'd probably go for. Um, another way that people are always going to talk about is on Facebook. If you're on these Facebook investor groups, you're going to see these virtual assistants marketing their service, right? Everyone has to market it some way and what better place than a place where all the investors are at. So on Facebook groups, you're always going to see virtual assistants. You can search it up virtual assistants for real estate. Um, those are great as well with those. There is an issue with payment, right? They are not going to take your usual PayPal, Cash App, there's not a third party. A lot of them want something like Western Union, Remitly, and when you're paying them kind of, in, like you're dealing with them directly, there's no guarantee that they're gonna complete the job. No, I'm not saying that everyone on, on Facebook is, is gonna try and scam you, but it does happen. Um, a lot of these virtual assistants want payment up front sometimes because they've gotten scams as well from investors. Like they'll make them work for a week and not pay them. So a lot of them do want the payment up front, which is absolutely fine. But when you're dealing with them directly, you can't really get your money back from Western Union or anything if they don't complete the job. That's why I prefer these third party apps that kind of take control of the financial part. Um, but you can still use Facebook. I've gotten great virtual assistants off of Facebook. And some of the stuff that we do is kind of pay maybe half up front and then half afterwards or a small portion up front, like maybe $50 up front, like a deposit. And the rest gets paid when the job is complete. Now, I do want to share my screen with you guys and show you guys how I use Upwork and upload a job proposal and how how these um, applicants kind of come up on Upwork. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I know a lot of people prefer kind of like a visual step by step. So I'm going to share my screen and show you guys. And then I kind of will go on about how I interview them, um, the questions that I ask. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you guys about that later on in this video. But let's go on Upwork. So as soon as you go on Upwork.com, this is kind of what you're going to look at. Um, you're going to create an account, of course. You just need your email, um, uh, your name, and then a phone number, I believe. Once you create an account, you're able to go to this job section up here, and you can post the job, right? So I'm going to show you an old one that I had um, right here on this screen. So this is a job post that I posted. Um, I have it in the wholesaling course as well. Linked in the description is a free wholesaling course. On one of the slides, it's for the virtual assistants, and it has this exact part, right, on what to post. And of course, you can change it up however you like, um, but this is how I have it. Now hiring experienced real estate cold caller, appointment setters, um, Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., part-time, full-time weekends. For us, we, we let them work whenever they want. It doesn't matter. Um, and then, of course, there's just a couple of information. Must be a proactive team player. Experience is a must. Um, if they're not experienced, it's fine. We can train them. But I do prefer them experienced just because I don't want to go through the whole training process. Um, but you can. They're a lot cheaper when they're not experienced. Like I've seen them go down to like $2 an hour. But keep in mind, you're going to have to spend time training them how to call, how to maybe learn real estate if they don't know anything about real estate, 
uh, train them how to use a dialer. So it's an extra step, but uh, if you're trying to go the cheap route, then that absolutely works. Um, must be fluent in American English, must be able to use Mojo Dialer. So I use the Mojo Dialer. You don't have to, you can have them be experienced in um, Batch Dialer or Call Tools or Call Rail or um, the REI Reply Dialer. Like there's a bunch of dialers. Um, I just started out with Mojo. I, I like the Mojo Dialer, so I just never changed it up. Um, it's a little bit expensive, honestly, so I probably should change it up. Like we're it's charging us about 180 um per virtual assistant because we're adding a recording feature so it's a little high i know like rei reply has a new dialer uh that's coming up at like 30 dollars a month so i'm probably going to make the switch soon um but since rei reply is still kind of new so i'm gonna have to train all the virtual assistants so i have to learn the dialer myself and then train the virtual assistants and it becomes kind of like a time consuming thing so that's why i've stuck with mojo dialer but there are plenty of alternatives um but i do like the dialer itself and then of course must have high internet speed, quiet background, uh, you know, pretty self-explanatory stuff, right? Um, I kind of do it for less than 30 hours a week, but some of them of course work more than 40 hours a week. Length of the project, three to six months, you can change this up, it's not really that important. Um, expert and then hourly, four to six dollars an hour, depends on their experience. Um, but that's how I do it. As soon as I post the proposal, the job post, um, I get these proposals, right? So I'm gonna show you guys these archived ones. Obviously this job post expired since I already hired a virtual assistant, but you guys can still see it. So I had 27 applicants. So 27 people apply to be a virtual assistant. Um, and you can kind of see here like what they requested. So their hourly that they requested, how much they've earned on Upwork, which is really important to see. Um, their job success, so people have rated them. Um, and then once you click on the actual thing, like their actual post, it has a cover letter. So like their resume, um, their work history, who they've worked with before, how much they got paid. So this person worked for $5 an hour, worked 1,008 hours, made $5,000. So they do have experience. So this is very interesting. This is someone that I'd probably go with. Um, you can see there's, there's plenty to choose from. Each one has their own rate. Each one has their own experience. Each one has their own resume and cover letter to choose from. It really ends up being your choice when it comes to choosing a virtual assistant so here's what i can say females tend to be a little bit more reliable they tend to be a lot more organized than male virtual assistants um, another thing is females are less likely to get cursed out as much as a male virtual assistant so i do kind of have a preference to female virtuous virtual assistants compared to male virtual assistants but it really is up to you guys um in terms of after they send a proposal, like I get on a Zoom call with most of these, right? Like I look at all the cover letters, I look at their experience, I look at their reviews, and I pick a couple, like a handful, maybe five or 10, and I get on a Zoom call with them. And I ask them very basic questions, a little bit about themselves, their experience in real estate, uh, why they left their old job, right? That's a big one, like where they fired, where they quit. And obviously they might not tell you the truth, but at least hear their response, hear what they have to say, right? It might be important to you in terms of your business. So I had a virtual assistant, like I was on a Zoom call and I had this virtual assistant that said that they left because they found a job elsewhere that paid them more. Um, in a sense, that's great for them. And it's probably what I'd do if I found a job better elsewhere and got paid more, I'd probably go for it. But in terms of as an employer, you gotta think of it as, are they gonna quit on me if they find someone else that pays them more? So is that someone that you're looking to get? They might not be as reliable. Um, so it really is all up to you and, and what you get on a Zoom call with them. Um, but it's very little basic questions about them, about their work. Um, sometimes I've asked them for a trial day, like one day where they'll go on a call for a couple hours, two or three hours, absolutely free. Um, sometimes I'll pay it maybe like a half price um, just to see how they are on the calls. Now keep in mind these dialers track everything. They track how many calls they make, they track the recordings when they speak to homeowners, and that's what I'm listening into. I wanna see how they actually speak to homeowners. So you can kind of play around with it however you like. There's not like an exact step to how to hire virtual assistants, right? Nobody knows that. Um, you kind of just Zoom call them and you figure out if they are just a right fit with you, if you guys just mesh correctly in a way. And if it works, get them a trial day, like a couple of days, you know, um, pay them half price if need be, or pay them the full price. Um, and train them for a week before you make a full-time decision on them, right? And that's kind of how we play it. Now, virtual assistants are great, um, but like I said in the beginning, they are only as great as you are. Now, my virtual assistants all started off experience, 
but they weren't perfect, right? The only way that they got to where they're at is because we got on Zoom calls with them on a weekly basis. I track their calls on a daily basis and whatever I see that they could have said better, they could have done better, I'm on that Zoom call with them explaining to them what they did wrong and how they can fix it. So they're able to not make the same mistake twice and they're able to get better and better at their calls. And that's how it works, right? It doesn't matter how a virtual assistant starts, it's how they continue, right? I wanna see progress, I wanna see them get better. And the only way they can do that is by, by us, right? We have to train them to become better. We have to train them to get better. Um, so that's one of the biggest recommendations that I'm gonna give you guys. You can't just hire a virtual assistant, give them a list and just let them off loose. It doesn't work like that. You have to be able to consistently track them. And there's so many softwares where you can get them to record their screen and all that, but I don't, I don't think that's necessary. The dialer itself have tracking softwares, so you'll know exactly when they pause a call, when they stop a call, um, and of course, all the calls are recorded. So that's more than enough for me when it comes to virtual assistants, um, and I get on Zoom calls with them weekly, right? So if they have any questions, comments, concerns to make this better, I listen to them, right? Because they're the ones doing this, not me. So whatever I need to get them to be able to get better at this, I will provide it. And that's the biggest tip I can give you guys. So I hope this helped. I hope you guys, I guess, understood a little bit more about virtual assistants. Um, and don't forget, I have the free wholesaling course linked in the description, which basically covers how to start wholesaling, how to grow your operation and how to automate the entire thing. Absolutely free. I wish you guys the best of luck in real estate. Of course, I want you guys to succeed. And if I can make this just a little bit easier on you guys, then I'm doing my job correctly. Um, so don't forget to like, don't forget to comment if you have any questions and subscribe, of course. And if you guys want more videos on a constant basis, you're better off on my TikTok and Instagram. I try to post there almost on an everyday basis. So thank you guys for watching.